Hello fellow audio nerds, I'm Steph, and this is a major hi-fi. Some of my favorite noise-canceling headphones are the Sony WH-1000X Mark II. So last year when the Mark III came out, I was really excited to give them a listen. Well, it took long enough to get my hands on them, but finally I got a chance to spend some quality time with the Mark III. So one of the biggest questions you might have are, is it worth the upgrade from the two? I'll try to answer that today. Let's go back in time. I'll share with you my first impressions, and then I'll meet you right back here for my overall thoughts. All right, here we go. Hey there, welcome to my place. So finally, I've got my hands on the Sony WH-1000X Mark III, so let's see what's inside the box here. All right, so as you'll see here, you have everything you need. First things first, we've got this really nice carrying case, makes it super portable, um, coated in canvas. It just looks really clean and nice. Um, inside, you've got space for all of the accessories and cables and everything, and then obviously the headphones. It zips right up, so it'll be really good for taking on the go. Next, you've got uh, the audio cable. Now, obviously, these headphones are wireless, but they do have a cable that you can listen, um, so you can listen to them wired. Uh, next, you've got the USB-C charging cable, super nice. And of course, if you're serious about having really strong noise cancellation, that probably means you're taking some airplanes. So there is an airplane adapter in the box as well. And then finally, you've got some documentation. And then obviously here we have the headphones. They're really nice and clean and good looking. Um, and yeah, they have a lot of similarities to the Mark II version of these headphones, but they are just like, there's a little bit of a variation in regard to like the ear cup shape and everything. Um, but I'll get more into that as we go on here. As for the headband of these headphones, you'll notice that um, it's nice and flexible. Um, it definitely moves around a nice amount. Um, there's just some nice padding on the top where your head hits. Uh, it's a nice thick amount of padding there um, and it's coated in kind of this pleather material. It feels like the headband is made of aluminum or some kind of metal um, and then it has sort of um, these extenders with a strip of aluminum and then it think plastic underneath it. Um, kind of hard to tell and there wasn't that much info on the site but in regard to like how it looks and feels and stuff um, that's what it feels like. Moving downward you'll see that these ear cups rotate a hefty amount and obviously you know the headphones fold up really nicely in a small package but these hinges uh, also let the headphones fold up. Um, it is attached to these yokes that are really nice and attached to either side of the ear cup here. Um, kind of makes these, these ear cups rock in the yoke nicely. I am curious to see how they feel. But yeah, super comfortable actually. I feel like they're kind of more comfortable than the Mark II from at least my memory. Um, I do feel like the pressure on the top, but because of how soft the padding is, um, it's really comfortable. And I should also mention that when I put these headphones on my head just now, no noise cancellation is on. The headphones are completely turned off. But when I put them on, it really blocks out a lot of noise. They're super sound isolating. Now the ear cups are, have a really reasonable size to them. You'll notice like when I put them on, they, they fit around the ear completely, but they don't take up all that much space. They don't really look bulky or feel bulky. And there's a lot of extra space here for the ear to sit. And something I really love about these, um, these ear cups is that on the inside here, this is all super soft padding. It's not directly on the actual ear, ear cup. And as a result, it just makes the headphones sit really comfortably. In regards to like how the, the clamping force is, it feels super secure, but it doesn't feel overly tight or anything. And it makes these headphones just, you'll be able to wear these for a really long period of time without it kind of feeling uncomfortable. Now the ear cups do have touch controls um, that you'll use for changing the volume up and down, um, skipping tracks, play and pause. Um, but also the ear cups at the bottom, you'll see some controls here. There's the power button right here, and that, that also works as the Bluetooth pairing button. Um, but there's also a button here for noise cancellation mode uh, slash ambient mode that you can kind of toggle between. Um, there's also an app, and I'm going to get more into the app um, as we go on here. But uh, with the app, you can make even further adjustments. But yeah, the ear cups kind of have some important stuff. Um, there is the audio jack right here on the left ear cup and then the charging port um, for USB-C uh, on the right ear cup. 
And then finally, as for the ear pads, there's a really nice space here for the ear to sit. And it's, I feel like the older, uh, the Mark II version had a little bit of a tighter kind of, um, tighter fit there and kind of could make it less comfortable for folks. But I think that these ear pads are gonna work better for a wider variety of ear shapes and sizes. Um, and I, yeah, so they're, it's kind of a soft foam here, you'll notice. Um, you'll see how it takes a little time to kind of regain its shape. Um, and then that's also coated in a similar pleather as the headband, um, a nice soft kind of pleather material. So a few details you might just want to know regarding the wireless connection for these. Um, it actually supports a pretty wide range of codecs. You've got the typical SBC, AAC, and it's all like Bluetooth 4.2. You also get Aptex, Aptex HD, and LDAC, uh, the Sony codec. So it's, yeah, gonna be really good, especially if you're the type of person that wants a headphone that can support higher resolution wireless listening codecs. Um, if, you, if you're one of those nerds out there. If you're listening to these wirelessly and with noise cancellation on, they last for 30 hours, which I think is remarkable. Um, if you are listening wired with noise cancellation on, um, it'll last for 38 hours. So these are gonna be great for those of you taking longer trips. Um, you could really get like across the world in an airplane with these headphones uh, and not worry about them dying. I definitely want to do like kind of a separate, I'm, I'm gonna do like a, a noise cancellation review here, but I also just wanna mention that um, if you are somebody that's kind of sensitive to noise cancellation, you can turn the noise cancellation on and off and there's even an ambient mode. So depending on the situation you're in um, and whatever, you'll still be able to use these headphones as just normal headphones. Um, you don't have to have the noise cancellation on all the time and that's a switchable feature. Now, before getting into the sound of the headphones and more details about the way that the, uh, that the noise cancellation uh, the way that it sounds and how effective it is. I want to talk to you about some of the features on the Sony Connect app. So while I'm talking here, I'm going to overlay a little bit of, um, you know, screenshots from me actually moving through the app so you can see what it looks like. But there are a few features. One is the atmospheric optimization. Now this kind of helps optimize the sound for different altitudes. When you're in a plane, sound moves differently, I guess. And so Sony is trying to uh, you know, uh, make up for that and make it so that the sound sounds the best, even if you're at a different um, altitude. Um, there's also a really cool feature called personal noise cancellation. And this actually measures the characteristics of you, like your head size, your glasses, your hair, etc. cetera. Um, and it adapts the noise cancellation so that it's optimized for your particular head and the way the headphones fit on your head. Next, and this is not so much in the app, but it's one of my favorite features of this headphone and also the Mark II, but it's quick attention. It's basically when you have noise cancellation on and when you're listening to music, but all of a sudden, oops, somebody wants to get your attention, wants to talk to you. you all you do is place your hand over the, um, the ear cup uh, on the right and it turns the volume down so that you can have conversations with people without like taking the headphones off and without, um, you know, kind of getting distracted and, and, you know, having to like try and pause your music and everything like that. You can just do it super, super easily and then get right back to listening. Um, the next feature is the adaptive noise control. Now this, uh, for me, it wasn't working super well with the Mark II, so I'm super curious to see how it works with the Mark III. Um, but it basically detects your activity, like are you walking around? Are you kind of getting up and down a lot? Are you traveling? Or have you been sitting still for a long time? And it adjusts the ambient sound settings to kind of what activity level it thinks you're doing. So I'm very curious to try that out with these headphones. And then there are a few other par parameters that you'll notice in there. There's some EQ, virtual sound, uh, sound, uh, surround sound <laughs> that maybe you'll be into if you want it to sound more like you're at a concert or whatever, um, some sound position control. But anyway, it's a good app and it works really well. Um, so we'll see kind of how the noise cancellation sounds now. Power on. Ooh, whoa. That is a strong noise cancellation. 
all the low frequency stuff from the street down below is completely cut out. But also, like, the thing that I'm really impressed with, um, just off the bat listening to it super quickly, is just how well it's it's canceling out uh, high mid frequency information. Because most headphones, like, I can tell from, like, I can't really hear my own voice in space, but also, like, like the transient of me hitting this table, I like I barely barely hear it um, I can hear just like the quick quick tiny attack um, and it feels super small um, most noise canceling headphones can't do that actually dang um, I was just listening to the song didn't you know by Erica Badu and the kick drum feels huge it has like super subby energy um, and it feels really really punchy um, it definitely moves some serious air, but the thing that's kind of interesting about it is that the bass guitar still maintains, like, it doesn't feel cloudy, in other words. Um, it still kind of, like, has clarity there, um, <clears throat> as well as the rest of the mid-range instruments. All right, I was just listening to the song No Woman by Whitney. And um, the, the vocals sit a little bit further back in the mix uh, than usual. But that said, the acoustic guitar, the horns, all felt super, super full. Um, and really kind of like, I don't know, had this sort of sense of emphasis to them, I guess. In regard to the electric guitar, it sounded super full. Uh, its attack was a little bit lighter in the mix than usual, actually. So it kind of had this like warmness to it. Um, to its sort of like quality of sound. Um, but kind of an interesting mid-range, definitely looking forward to listening more analytically as the week goes on. All right, I was just listening to the song So Tender by Keith Jarrett. Now the, um, the attack of the piano felt a little bit lighter than it usually does, um, a little bit further back in the mix and further back in space too. Um, as for the cymbals, uh, the cymbals did have emphasis around the area where you might like get a sense of texture from them. Um, but in regard to their actual sustain, the sustained part of the cymbal felt a little bit further back in, in the mix level wise. and. <clears throat> that sort of left room for uh, the attacks to feel kind of emphasized on those cymbals. But overall, the cymbals kind of came through in like a delicate kind of way. It was both delicate and light, but also kind of had the sense of texture be emphasized from them, if that makes sense. Okay, so I was just listening to the song Slow Burn by Casey Musgraves. And in terms of the sound stage, there is really good contrast between like the lowness of the kick and the bass compared to Casey's vocal, which feels like airy and up high. Um, however, a lot of instruments in the song that usually would have been a little bit, um, a little bit <clears throat> higher in space actually feel a little bit more toward the middle, probably because of the shape of the high frequencies in that way. In terms of the sense of width, there was really good contrast between the things out wide and you know the vocal, which feels super centered, like the synth, um, kind of like string stuff, uh, kind of wide uh, reverb effects. But in terms of like the actual amount of width, it kind of felt a little bit narrow and maybe that's also a product of the strong noise cancellation. Had a similar, feeling in regard to the sense of depth, but something that helped the sense of depth was that I could really hear the reverbs on her voice, on of the synths, um, and the room mics uh, as well. There is sort of, because of that big mid-range, it makes the room mics and the reverbs come through clearly, which sort of helps with the sense of depth, I think. Anyway, I'm really looking forward to continuing listening as the week goes on, and I will meet you back at the Major Hi-Fi office for my overall thoughts. All right, I will see you there. So before getting into the overall sound quality of the 1000X Mark III, I first just want to say that the level of noise cancellation really takes these headphones to the next level from the Mark II. So if you are the type of person that, you know, you really want to have the strongest noise cancellation possible, this is going to be worth the upgrade. It does an amazing job of cutting out the usual stuff that 
uh, noise canceling headphones usually get out. So like low rumbles, airplane engine, um, you know, kind of a constant fan. But it also does an amazing, amazing job of also cutting out uh, noise and transients in the high mids, which is usually really hard to cut out and one that I haven't experienced a headphone that does it better than these. Um, really is somehow able to kind of cut out things even if it's transient. So I think it's super, super well done. And um, if you are really sensitive to people talking or the sound of typing, if you want something to like make things quieter in an office space, for example, I think that you'll really enjoy the 1000X Mark III. Now, the low frequencies of the 1000X Mark, Mark III are actually super powerful and work really, really well for those that like a big bass. So if you are listening to hip hop, pop, uh, electronic music, EDM, um, if you're listening to rock with like a big kick drum, this will definitely give that kick drum emphasis and it will definitely give the lows a huge kick. There's energy, there's extra energy in the sub region, so it does have a sense of like extension and just like lowness to those low frequency instruments. But there also seems to be a boost somewhere around like 80 hertz, uh, 100 hertz or so. And as a result, that creates a lot of like thumping energy as well to kick drums, bass synths, anything that has like a lot of low frequency information down there. As for the mid-range of the headphones, um, the low mids feel super full, the middle part of the mid-range feels super full, so things like synths, electric guitars, big strings sound really big and kind of adds to the emotional impact that those instruments have. Additionally, though, there is a cut in the up in the high mids, like in general. Now, as a result, sort of the attack of guitars can seem further back in space. Vocals sometimes sound a little bit quieter in the mix. Yet, because of the way that the high mids are sort of evenly cut, it still maintains a sense of harmonic complexity. It's just like lower in the mix, quieter, um, but you'll still get the same tonal character from vocals, for example. So it's actually kind of an interesting mid-range. Now the high frequencies of the 1000X Mark III uh, have emphasis in the upper treble specifically and a little bit in the upper octave as well. Now what this does is it sort of brings the attacks of cymbals forward in the mix. And although, uh, even though sometimes their sustains can feel a little bit further back, that said, there's this sense of texture to those cymbals, to those pieces of percussion to vocals and audible airiness that really is an aesthetically pleasing sound. It's definitely not the most accurate or realistic sounding thing, but it is aesthetically pleasing and it doesn't have um, any harshness to it either. Um, I think it's really well done and one that kind of lends itself best to like vocal music. Uh, it lends itself best to hip hop, to pop music. Um, and those kinds of genres that don't require all the realism in the world to get the point across, but still do require, you know, or still do just respond kindly to um, a colored high end that feels pretty in the way that it's shaped. As for the sound stage of the headphones, it's actually sort of interesting because for a pair of noise canceling headphones, I think the sound stage is actually like, it's okay. In other words, there's substantial um, co uh, contrast between, for example, things that are really close and intimate in space and things that are further back, or things that are panned center and things that are panned out wide, or things that are sitting way up top and things that are really sinking down uh, deep below you. The thing is, though, because of the shape of the frequency response, this sound stage isn't super accurate, although the contrast is still there. So for example, um, because of the middle, uh, the high mid cut that you get from these, vocals don't sound as intimate as they usually do. The attacks of guitars don't sit as forward in the mix as they usually do. That said though, because of the sort of like upper treble um, emphasis there in the highs, um, there's certain parts of the vocal that come forward, sort of this audible airiness that brings it forward and brings that vocal upward. Um, it's sort of just the way those, those frequencies sit changes kind of where they sit in the sound stage, if that makes sense. Overall, the Sony WH-1000X Mark III is probably the best option I've heard in terms of a super strong noise cancellation to good sound ratio. Um, usually things with a really strong noise cancellation, their sound kind of suffers, but I think that these maintain a really good sense of 
um, of detail and just overall good sound, aesthetically pleasing sound, um, compared to the level of noise cancellation. I think genre-wise, these headphones work best for hip-hop, for pop, for anything that's using a lot of synthesized instruments and things that, that don't need a whole lot of realism, but that benefit from a full mid-range and a nice big low end. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like another perspective on the Sony WH-1000X Mark III, you can check out the description box down below. I've left a link to my colleague's review. Um, additionally, if you are interested in these headphones, I do have a 10% discount code in the description box below. So um, it'll give you a little break on buying the headphones. And finally, um, yeah, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. All right, I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you.